guys, welcome back to Urban Rhino Tutorials. Today I want to show you how to make a beaded wrap bracelet. Um, this is probably one of our longest running projects that we've done in our jewelry and glass classes. Um, and we do it in jewelry and glass one. The students really like it. Um, they just enjoy doing the project and then they especially like the outcome of it. Um, they're pretty, pretty trendy right now. So... Um, what I'm going to do is start by taking um, some waxed cotton cord. You can do leather if you prefer. Um, and this type of cord you can buy at Hobby Lobby. Again, I buy almost all of my supplies from Panda Hall. Um, but you want to have enough of this to be able to wrap around your wrist however many times you're wanting it to wrap. So for my students, it has to wrap around three times um, minimum. So in order to do that, um, you can either just get like about five feet of it and that's usually sufficient or you can wrap it around your wrist. So if we're doing three times, one, two, three, about like that, take it off and then double it. And then I usually tell them to add just a little bit more to allow for the knot and stuff. So they end up with, again, about five feet um, of their cord. And then, from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a button. Um, this serves as like the closure or the clasp for your necklace, I mean for your wraparound bracelet. You're gonna slide that onto your cord here and you want to pull it to the halfway point. So you wanna make sure that you have even amounts of your cord sticking out. So. some more here I'm trying to get these even at the end okay so that's pretty even so now that I have the button on um, I'm just gonna knot the back here um, and hold it in place and I've I've tried several different knots and sometimes the kids just get so overwhelmed by what I'm showing them and I've found that just tying it in a double knot like you would a shoelace is, is, works just, the, just as good as anything else. So, Okay, so we've got that on. Um, we are ready to clip it down. So um, in my class we use these just little, it's chipboard. Um, it's like a thick cardboard or if you have a clipboard you can use that. Um, and I'm going to clip it so that the button is face down like this so that it holds it in place. And I want to be able to see my knot because that is where I'm going to put my needle and thread through. And then from here, you want to get about an arm span length of thread. So again, another five or six feet. And you will have to add on thread at some point. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit shorter piece just to show you. When the time comes and you have to add thread on, all you do is, so let's say you get a ways on, you know, with your beads and you need to add more thread. So you've gotten to the point where you only have about two inches left of your thread. Then you'll just trim the thread so take your needle off, you'll get a new piece of thread and put it on your needle, and then you just take your, your two ends here of your new thread and tie them onto the existing thread, and then you can just continue on. You will end up with like a little, um, little tails of your um, thread, and so I would wait until you get a few beads on and then go back and trim those. You wanna make sure that it's really secure before you do that. So I put my needle on my thread and pull it halfway up the thread. So now I have my two ends of my thread right here. I'm going to knot them. So I just wrap them around my fingers and make a, a single knot is sufficient. And then I'm going to take the needle 
and go right through the knot of the cord. And I'm gonna pull it all the way until it catches on the knot that I made um, in my thread. And then I'm just gonna trim off the little pieces that are sticking out. So now I'm ready to begin with my beads. Um, from here, take your thread and just make sure, so put it in between your two cords like this and put it underneath the left side. What that does is that gets you started so that you're ready to go starting on the left side. So this is a very simple pattern, um, especially once you get the hang of it. At first it can seem a little bit overwhelming, but once you get um, three or four on, most of my students are like, oh, okay, I get it, simple enough. So what you're gonna do is um, start with your bead, slide it onto your needle, and let it sit right here in the middle of your cords. Then you're gonna take your needle and go underneath your right side cord, like that. And then you're gonna go back over it, through the bead again, and under the left side. So all you're doing is essentially making a figure eight pattern. Every time you put a bead on, you'll go through it once going to the right and a second time going back to the left. And then you're ready to put your next bead on. You wanna pull it tight and pull it all the way up so that it sits here between the two um, cords like that. So again, I'm going to put my bead on I'm gonna let it sit in the middle of my strands there, my, my cord. I'm gonna take my needle, go under the right side, back over the right side, through the middle bead, and under the left side. And I usually hold the bead while I pull the um, thread. And then you just pull it up into place and tighten it. I'm gonna do two more here, and then I'll skip ahead and show you the end and how to finish it. Because you don't wanna watch me do this for an hour. So again, a bead goes on, you set it in the middle, you're gonna go under the right side, back over the right side, through that bead again, and under the left side. So pretty much the whole time the bead stays right in the middle. And then you pull it tight, like that. So let's do one more. So again, bead goes on, set it in the middle, under the right side, back over it, through that bead, and under the left side. All right, I've had many kids tell me, this is so relaxing and so therapeutic. Hopefully um, you think the same, so we'll see. So you would just continue on all the way until you get to the point where it wraps around. So again, for instance, for my students, it needs to wrap around three times. Um, once the actual beaded part gets to that point where it wraps three times, so you can unclip it from your board and check that, um, then you're ready to stop. So um, I'm going to work on this. I'm gonna get it all done and then I'm gonna show you how to. Okay, so I have now finished um, all of this and you can see one, two, three. It actually um, wraps around four times. Um, I am ready to finish this. So what I'm gonna do, um, I put my last bead on I'm gonna take, before you cut your needle and thread off, what you wanna do is actually poke through the cord itself, through the bead and through the cord on the other side and pull that to hold that last bead in place and go back a second time and do that. And then from here, you can trim off the thread leaving um, four or five inches here. 
and then split your pieces apart and just tie it a couple times. So that will keep it from pulling back through the cord. Okay, and then trim that off like that. So my beads are in place now. Those shouldn't move. Um, and you'll notice as I was working, I moved my strand up and clipped it. And I like to put another one down here sometimes to hold it in place. So let me unclip all of this. Um, I was getting near the end of my roll, so the ends are a little crazy. Um, what you're going to do from here is tie right below the, um, the last bead. So again, I do this where I take it around my finger and then tuck it in to make a knot like that. And then when you pull it tight, you want to make sure you get that knot just below those last beads. So you kind of have to move it as you're tightening it. So that's what I have now is a knot right there. And then the last thing that I need to do is I need to make a second knot. And the second knot is so that I have a place for my, my um, button to hook through. So like it's gonna hook through like that. So I'm going to again wrap it around my fingers there maybe. And before, again, before I pull it tight, I need to check it to see exactly where I need that knot to go um, so that I have enough space for the button to fit through. So I usually slide the button in and kind of hold it as I'm pulling the other tight. You don't want it so tight that you can't fit the button through, but you don't want it so loose that, um, that it's coming back out. So that should be sufficient. Um, now you can leave some of these. I usually like to trim them a little bit. Like I don't mind having a little bit of the tail there. Um, unclip it. Maybe if I can get a hold of it here. There we go. And then you can see and it's all twisted around right now, but that it meets up. I've actually, like I said, had it four times here where it wraps around and then I would hook it together right there. Okay, super cute. Um, these are gonna look very different depending on the cord color and the bead color. If you do a pattern, if you keep it all solid, these are more of a metallic bead. Um, all of that stuff is going to affect the final outcome, even the button, the way the button looks. Um, make sure as well that you pay attention to the cord that you purchase. So this is a one millimeter. If you want to go up and do a little bit larger and do two millimeter, you can as well. Again, it's just completely your preference. So, um, hope you guys Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you stay connected with Urban Rhino on social media. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and of course, subscribe to our channel.